the second video of the video series on class 6 science motion and measurement of distances and in today's video we are going to learn about motion. Let's say you traveled from Chennai to Bangalore covering some distance. Now how did you cover this distance? With the help of an object that is moving as in with the help of a car or a bus or a train that is moving. And what is this movement? This movement is what we call as motion. So whenever we talk about moving from one position to another, moving from one place to another, something has to move and that movement is nothing but motion. So in physics, we define motion as change in position with time. So if you look, if you again look at the same bus, the bus was initially at Chennai. After some time, it was at some other point. After some time, again, it was at some other point and finally it reached Bangalore. So as time passed by, the position of the bus kept on changing and that is when we say that the bus is in motion. So let us look at the moving blades of the fan. So when the blades move, what is it? the blades are continuously changing their position. At this point it is here, next point it is here, next point it is here. So continuously changing position. So the blades of the fan are in motion. Similarly, you look at the example of a moving car. So when the car moves, what happens? Initially it was at this position. This was the initial position. After some time it was here again, after some time it was here, here and finally it reached at this position. So this is an example of a car in motion. Let us look at some other variety of examples where we see motion, where we see objects moving. So look at this. When this girl is playing football, so what's happening? Do you think that the girl is in motion? Yes, of course, because the arms, the legs of the girl is continuously changing their position with time. So obviously overall the girl is in motion. You talk about a person who is running, so he is in motion because with every instant of time, his position is changing. When you are working on a laptop, you are sitting in front of computer and you are working on the laptop. Do you think there is any motion anywhere because you are not changing your position, you are sitting at the same place. So basically you are not moving from one place to another. But when you look at your fingers, your fingers are constantly changing their position. So that your fingers are in motion. Look at a bird which is flying. So the bird is flying from one place to another. So the bird is again in motion. Think of a lady who is dancing. So when you are dancing, your hands, legs, fingers, everything is like moving. They are changing their position with time. So your different parts of your body are in motion. So not only these, you think of other examples which already exist in nature. For example, think of the rotation of the earth about its axis. So we all know that the earth rotates about its own axis like this. So rotation of the earth is also a motion because with time, each point on the earth is changing its position. Right? So at this instant of time, this point is here, next in instance it is here, next instance it is here and so on. So with time, the position is changing and therefore this is in motion. You talk about revolution of the earth around the sun. We also know that the sun, the, the earth not only rotates about its own axis, but it also revolves around the sun. So if this is the sun, this is how the earth rotates around it. So there also the position is changing with time. So the earth is in motion. So these are all, so when you look at different things around yourself, try to see which objects are in motion and which objects are at rest. Let's say uh, when your fan is switched off, observe it. Do you think it is in motion? No. But as soon as you switch it on, what happens? The blades of the fan starts moving. So the blades start changing their position with time. So the blades are in motion. So uh, in, in real life, you try to observe things around yourself and try to find out which objects are in motion and which objects are at rest. Now, when we talk about motion, it is a relative term. What do we mean by relative term? It means that whenever we say that an object is in motion, we say with respect to some frame of reference. Now, what do we mean by frame of reference? Sounds a difficult term, but the concept is not that difficult. Let's say you are standing at the bus stop. 
So do you think you are in motion? No, because you are standing at one place. You are not moving from one point to another. You are not changing your position. So you are at rest. Now what happens? A bus arrives. A bus comes and it just passes by. So you are still at rest. Correct? You are still at rest. But think of the same situation with respect to somebody who is sitting inside the bus. Let's say for a passenger who is sitting inside the bus, for that passenger, are you at rest? That passenger might feel that you are moving in this direction because when we are sitting inside the bus, we are not moving, the bus is moving basically. So I am at rest. The person who is sitting inside the bus thinking that he is at rest. But when he is looking outside, he feels that these people, the bus stop, the trees, everything is moving in the opposite direction. So there are two different things. With respect to you, you are at rest. But with respect to somebody inside a moving bus, you are moving. So that is why we say that motion is a relative term. So it always depends with respect to what are you looking at the motion of an object. So that, that reference is termed as the frame of reference. So if you are looking with respect to yourself, then you are the frame of reference. If you are looking at it with respect to the person sitting inside the bus, then that is the frame of reference. Now, when we discuss about motion, there are many different types of motion that exist. So one common type of motion is rectilinear motion, which is also termed as linear motion. So this is about motion along a straight line. When an object moves along a straight line, as you can see here, this car is moving along a straight path. So when a car is moving on a highway, that is a straight path, there are no turns. So that is rectilinear motion or often also known as linear motion. Linear means something which lies on the same line. Other type of motion is circular motion. So when an object moves along a circular path, right? So just think of this example, the most common example that you can think of. Take a stone, tie it to a thread and hold the thread in your hand like this. And then you start spinning it. So as you give it some force, you will see that it starts moving in a circular path. So in this path, it will start moving like this. So when you, if you look at this movement of the thread from the top, so the top view would be something like this. So you see it is moving in a circular path. So this is, this type of motion is known as circular motion. Now can you think of some examples where you see objects are moving in circular path? Some common examples from your day to day life. Okay, let me tell you some examples. The movement of the blades of your fan, that is in a circular path. So this is how the blades move. So this is a circular path. So that's an example of circular motion. Think of the movement of your the hands of the clock. So that also moves in a circular path. So you see, there are so many objects around us where we see different types of motion. You can see rectilinear motion, you can see circular motion around yourself. So it is not necessary that you need to search your textbooks for examples. You just start observing things around you and you will see objects in circular motion. You will find objects in rectilinear motion and you will be able to relate signs with objects surrounding you. Now, there is another type of motion called periodic motion. Now this is interesting. What is periodic motion? So it is a type of motion where which would repeat itself at periodic intervals of time. So think of a pendulum clock. So I'm not sure if all of you have a pendulum clock at your home or not, but I'm very much sure that you would have seen a pendulum somewhere or the other. So how does the pendulum moves? So the pendulum moves somewhat like this. This is how the pattern of the motion is. So do you notice something that the same type of motion is being repeated again and again. So this ball kind of a structure which is there, it comes here, goes there, comes back here. Again it repeats the same thing, comes here, goes there, comes back here. Again the same thing. So basically the same pattern of motion is being repeated in periodic intervals of time, in equal intervals of time. So that is why this type of motion is called periodic motion. So it repeats itself in periodic intervals of time. So to complete this one mo movement, it takes the same amount of time every time. So that is why it is called periodic motion. 
Pend the motion of the pendulum is the best example for periodic motion. However, you can relate to a lot of things around you where periodic motion takes place. So let's think of a swing. So if you go to a children's park where you have a swing, what happens? If you put a little force to it, after that it, it keeps moving on its own. And that is a periodic motion because it keeps repeating the same pattern of motion. So that's an example of periodic motion. So this type of motion is also known as oscillatory motion. So one, this complete movement. I mean one pattern which is actually getting repeated over and again so that one pattern is often termed as one oscillation. So you will learn more details about oscillatory motion in your higher classes. So for now you should just know what kind of motion is periodic motion. Now let's look at some examples of periodic motion. So look at a lot of musical instruments and you will be able to see periodic motion in a lot of them. Think of a guitar. So as soon as you pull the string of a guitar, what happens? The string starts vibrating. So just try it out. If, if you have a guitar, guitar around you, so just pull a string of the guitar and leave it and you will see that the string will like kind of vibrate like this. So that motion is nothing but periodic motion. Think of the school bell or the Christmas bell. So as soon as you struck it on one end, it keeps moving like this. So that's a periodic motion. Take a rubber band, stretch it and then just move it, pluck it in, the, in between. Just move it in between. What happens? It starts vibrating in this fashion. So that is again periodic motion. In fact, a lot of musical instruments exhibit periodic motion like the the tabla, the dholak, so these are all different types of instruments where you can actually experience periodic motion in the form of vibration because vibration is nothing but periodic motion. In that case also the movement happens like this. The flute, so these are all different uh, examples which exhibit periodic motion. Now let us look at some special type of motions. Have you ever observed the motion of a spinning top? So you take a top, just move it and you see it keeps moving like this on the ground. So what kind of motion is this? So here the object is not moving along a straight line. So it is not linear motion. The object is also not moving in a circular path. So it is not circular motion. So what the object is doing? The object is actually rotating about itself. So basically it exhibits rotational motion because the object is rotating around itself, I mean around an axis within it. So it has rotational motion, but at the same time, if you observe it once again, it is also moving from one point to another. So there is some translatory motion as well. So it has a combination of translatory motion plus rotational motion. So translatory motion means when the object moves from one point to another. So here the object is moving from one point to another plus the object is also rotating within itself. So in a lot of cases where motion is not just one type of motion, it can be a combination of many different types of motion. So those kind of complicated motion also exists around us. Think of a ball which is moving down the slope. Now the ball might move like this. So basically what type of motion is this? So ball is moving along a straight path you might say, but in this case the ball is actually rolling. You, you just saw right how the ball rolled. So let's look at it once again. You see the ball just rolled around it. So this type of motion is termed as rolling motion because you know the ball is kind of rolling over it. Now sometimes the ball rolls at the same time it slips as well. So that time we'll say that the ball is rolling with sleeping. So these are like many different types of motion. Now these are quite complicated forms of motion and you will learn about them when you are in your class 11th. Now, Whenever we have to describe the motion of an object, it is very important to describe its position because what is motion? Motion is the change in position with time. So if we are not sure of the position of that object, how can we say if the object is in motion or not? So to describe the motion, the first thing that needs to be defined is the position of that object. So position would be that point at which the object is located at a particular instant of time. So let's say this boy is at this point A at a particular instant of time. So we have need to dis 
first define its position only then we can say if the object is moving because now looking at the boy we know that the boy is no more at position b a it has moved to some other position b so there is a change in position with time and therefore we say that the object is moving so whenever we have to talk about motion the first thing that we need to look at is the position of the object now that we have discussed so much about motion motion is all about moving from one case to other now when we started talking about motion we talked about covering the distance so how do we cover distances so for to cover distances some object has to be in motion so what are these objects these objects could be means of transportation for example it could be a car which helps us to cover distances it could be a cycle again which helps us to cover distance it could be a bus where multiple people can cover a huge number of distance so basically there are many different modes of transport there are many forms of vehicle which are used to cover distances either on land air or water so not only on land in, in, in the traditional days there used to be carts like bullock carts or the horse uh, driven carts so different types of carts were also there which were pulled by animals so they were also a means of transport when you look at air or water you have the spaceships which help to cover huge distances in the space you have uh, the ship in the oceans they help you to cover distances through water you have the aeroplane which helps you to cover distances through air so these are different means of transportation different ways by which you can cover distances between two places which are quite distant from each other so these are the various modes of transport so in all of them we see that they cover distances they are all in motion and that is what we have discussed in this entire lesson that what is distance how do we measure them when do we know that an object is in motion so i think now when you look at these different modes of transport you can associate the term motion with them you can associate distance and measuring their distance distances with them so when we talk about motion it becomes very important to talk about how an object is moving whether the object is moving very fast or the object is moving very slow so let's take an example of a car so let's say there are two different cars a red car and a blue car now if you look at these two pictures what do you see you saw that both the cars were initially at this position and with time they changed their position but did you observe something so the blue car reached the final destination early than the red car that's because the red car was traveling very slowly so this was slow motion so it was covering it it was changing its position but slowly with time whereas the blue car was changing its position very fast with time and that is what decides whether the motion is slow motion or fast motion so we say that the red car has a slow motion whereas the blue car has a fast motion so the red car has covered less distances in the same time but the blue car has covered more distance in the same time how do we know which object is faster so distance moved by objects in a given interval of time decides which one is faster or slower so when you have two different objects for example you have a bike and you have a bicycle now if you compare that how much distance did the bike cover in 5 minutes and how much distance the bicycle covered in 5 minutes you would see that the bike had covered more distance which says that the bike is a faster mode of transport than the bicycle similarly in the previous slide while we were comparing the red car with the blue car if you would have compared the distance traveled by both the cars in 1 minute you would have seen that the blue car had covered more distance than the red car so basically whichever object covers more distance in the same time that is said to travel faster so when we talk about whether the motion is slow or the motion is fast that is where we introduce the concept of speed of an object now speed is something which you we will learn in our next class that is in class 7 so in case you are interested to know more about it you can refer the video lessons of class seventh physics so speed is something which is introduced to let us know that how fast the distance is being covered by an object with time in the next video we are going to look at some very interesting and very important questions related to motion and measurement of distances so stay tuned